Well, this is where the movement comes in. This is where the train of thought comes in. This is where the chapters come in, what we're focused on and why, and what our motivations are based on the understanding that everything is connected. Our problems, our system outcomes, they're latent behaviors that are built in to the way we have structured our socioeconomic system. Time to address this stuff. So when people come at me and, or if I read how, you know, we're not credible, we're not doing enough, it's like, what else do you think we should be doing? We're doing the most fundamental, important thing, which is seeing the connectedness of the entire system, a systems approach, systems theory, uh, seeing how we're interconnected species with the systems around us, both psychological and environmental. The cultural value system of the day does not regard a root cause systemic view of the social problems. And the Zeitgeist Movement acknowledges this. And this is a fundamental difference between most cause-fighting, single-focused forms of, of patchwork and protest uh, that go on in the world and what the Zeitgeist Movement is trying to get people to understand. So that's a fundamental difference right there. Uh, and now some people can keep it separate. You know, I mean, I can go volunteer and feed the homeless and the people who are hungry and not confuse that with a global economic structure where everybody's needs are met. You know, I can actually understand both at the same time, doing what I can to reduce suffering in my local area uh, through some personal effort that I find makes a difference in the world. And I can also go out and advocate uh, the Zeitgeist Movement at the same time and not collapse the two down into one and the same. Uh, which is uh, something I see happen quite often. Uh, so getting this train of thought into the frame of reference of society, which is a massive undertaking, and is where critical mass awareness comes in. I mean, every movement, cause, uh, every um, petition, everything needs some sort of mass awareness. And, uh, you know, I often think about that and go like, well, why not go all the way then? If you're going to go for critical mass awareness for hunger, why not go for the whole system that's producing poverty? Without the frame of reference out in the public, uh, which is an educational imperative of ours, you're going to see very little change as people try to react and protest things that don't work in the current system. So if you're going to go out there and do critical mass awareness for a single symptom of the system, why not go all the way and go out there and advocate that the problem is systemic and that the system is producing these outcomes and get down to the root cause of the problems that we're trying to all address? Uh, why wouldn't you do that? You know, would be the question I'd ask somebody. That's not to say that doing something to alleviate suffering or trying to provide for people's needs uh, isn't necessary. It's not saying that at all. It's about having that distinction between providing for people's needs, immediate needs on a local level, and the meeting of everybody's needs on a global level. And the, my last point on, on this critique that comes up when I read language uh, that the movement isn't doing enough or that we're not doing the right thing or that we should be doing something else, you know, X, Y, and Z. As a person involved with the chapters, this is a common criticism for somebody that has an agenda that wishes to take the group in a different direction. And it's in this context uh, where we use terms such as side projects or patchwork efforts. Uh, not as a negative uh, connotation, but to actually have an understanding of the difference between uh, what the chapters are doing and what these projects are. Uh, and not to say one's right or wrong, but to actually understand the difference uh, and what it means to volunteer and what's happening when a, somebody comes in and wants to take the group resource uh, for their own NPO or take a volunteer resource uh, for their own agenda. Um, and there's sort of like, whether it's intentional or not, there's a market psychology at play. Uh, when these things happen, uh, or somebody feels entitled that the chapter is a resource for their own project, uh, and they're actually disrespectful of why the volunteers who are there, what they've shown up for, what they've agreed to, and the actions that they're trying to undertake. You know, there's a market psychology at work, which kind of goes against the personal values that are involved when you volunteer or when somebody contributes to a group without the need for self-gain. And so now we have a network of chapters across the globe focused on on-the-ground awareness activism uh, wherever you are on this train of thought to get it into the frame of reference of the social landscape. Uh, I see bits and pieces of this train of thought all over the place, but I, I can see people not making the connections uh, between the problems of economics and socioeconomic system or the problems of environmental issues and the socioeconomic system as a system problem uh, rather than just some sort of like behavioral anomaly uh, where you have like a bad person or a bad company or some, you know, just these immoral people and we need to either you know find them or lock them up or something like that. 
Uh, I know here locally with the chapter I participate in my region with the LA chapter, um, you know, we have quite a few folks that you know want to uh, do something in their community in addition to the awareness activism. And we're really doing our best to accommodate that through uh, people who may want to uh, do a transitional projects. They might have a community garden or want to have a book library, you know, share educational resources. Uh, and things like that, because some of the materials that we wish to share uh, or the educational materials that we refer to aren't always available at the local library. So, you know, you could get a, a copy of a book and then share that with the chapter membership. You know, we have a way of incorporating these things uh, into the group uh, without losing sight of the fact that, you know, if you want to grow food and have a garden, that the chapter is not about the garden. And when the focus and time and all the energy it takes to make a calendar of events and get the skills together from the group and everything it takes becomes all about the side project itself, then you've lost sight of the train of thought and reduced it down into a single symptom. Uh, as far as people who identify with the movement and associate with it, uh, there are multiple ways to associate with the Zeitgeist movement. You can be a casual supporter. You could be what we call an advocate. You know, you're out there on your own advocating this stuff. There's many people who do. Uh, you could call yourself a member of the Zeitgeist movement. Uh, in my case, I, my association with the movement is a, a supporter, an advocate, a member, and a coordinator. I also coordinate activism and created a place for people to stay in communication, all the coordinators in California, to uh, have a communications platform. Uh, so we can organize the larger events like the Global Z Days or town halls or the media festivals. All of this takes coordination and all of this takes time and resources uh, and the calendar of events to keep this all organized. Uh, it takes a lot of volunteer effort and skills. So uh, that becomes vital to the health and success and the longevity of any, any group, and especially uh, in this case, you know, the Zeitgeist Movement chapters. You know, I applaud those of you who are out there who are coordinating that have been able to uh, navigate these waters and um, not pollute the train of thought and have it confused or diffused into uh, a single symptom.